how uh, how weird is it going to be to play this game uh, with only select fans in Bramlage Coliseum? Well, obviously, I you know for our young guys, the guys that the new guys that haven't experienced the the atmosphere, whether it's the one in Allen or um, you know in Bramlage, it, it it you know you wish they could. I thought about it actually this morning. Um, that they could have that experience because it's, uh, you know, it's one of the, you know, the special games in college basketball, the special rivalry. Obviously, the fans, both sides get uh, pretty excited about it. And, uh, you know, you, you just wish you could have it. But we are having a game and that, you know, I, I was just on a radio uh, interview and, you know, you think about our league and the, pretty much the success we've had. Uh, getting games in and, and, you know, we've, we've been able to other teams in our league have, and, you know, as I said, last week, I think that you turn on some TV stations and guys have just got to 10 games, 11 games and, and we're double that. So it, you know, it's a, a, a good opportunity. I keep telling our guys every time they get to play, it's a special opportunity. And, and then this is a, a special game. We're, we'll have to play really well, um, you know, to have a chance. We'll, you know, they're very good defensively. Uh, uh, you know, Bill's teams have always been good. I think they, uh, they've gotten better as the year has gone on. They got, they got such versatility with their guys. They got length. Uh, uh, they got some guys that are pretty strong and that can uh, bump you off your cut switch and, 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 and deal with you. And, uh, you know, that, that's my, my biggest fear is our, us finding ways to score, uh, you know, they, they've struggled at times scoring, uh, but, uh, you know, they, when they, when they get going, they're very, very capable of, uh, uh, you know, scoring in, in high numbers and getting on runs. So we'll have to do a good job on both ends of the court. And in, in the first game you played against them, they seemed, um, you know, bound and determined not to let Nigel go off on you. Um, assuming they, you know, key on, key in on him again, what, what are some things you can do to get him some more open looks? I think Nigel got out of, uh, uh, kilter a little bit. He got out of his pace. He, they made him rush. They blitzed small screens. They, you know, anytime he came off of a, a cut, they kind of jammed them. And, and, um, you know, we, we, I talked with him yesterday after practice, we showed, we've showed him some stuff. Uh, just keep a good pace. Make make the next pass. He had he had Casey for a layup. He had Davion a couple times. You know now if it, make them pay if they're going to do that, make them pay. Um, you know we're going to have to get good movement. They do a great job of of switching some ball screens, blitzing ball screens, um, and and we're going to have to make the next pass. I think the probably one of the big keys will be. Um, not only Nigel, but other guys that we play off of their defense and we're able to make them continuously rotate and get in the paint, make the next pass, get in the paint, make the next pass, a lot like we did against Texas if we're going to have any success. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, next question to John Kurtz. Yeah, Bruce, are they doing anything differently, really, from the, the first time you guys saw them as much changed there with KU? I think they've evolved as a team. I, I You know, um, you you figure out ways you can score. Who You know, they're getting a Baji in the pin downs quite a bit. He's really good at that. Um, they got they, – obviously, McCormick is, is really, you know, one of the – numbers-wise, got to be one of the most improved guys in the league. Um, especially as the season has gone on, they've really made a commitment to getting him the ball. Um, and he's scoring not only on the block, but he's, you know, a couple times we got him, you know, like eight, 10 feet off the block. He did his nice little turnaround, um, you know, and then they, they mix in, you know, I think when I've always, it was Christian Braun uh, to me is a key for them when he can get, you know, his open, you know, two or three, three, four threes, um, now, now you really stretch the defense and, and put you in a bye because they got, you know, Garrett getting to the basket. They got a Bonji coming off pin downs. They got McCormick in the paint. Now they got you all strung out. Now you get Braun for open shots. And now that makes them much more effective. Are you anticipating Dejuan having a chance of being back this week at all? I think there's a chance. I, I would say by Saturday for sure. Uh, he did. I worked him out Sunday. Um, you know, his conditioning, obviously two weeks with really nothing except, you know, he started in the pool 
late last week running. Um, uh, he did get involved in practice yesterday, uh, uh, periodically parts of the practice. Um, we'll see how he does today. If we can, I don't want to push him tomorrow. Um, if there's any doubt, but, uh, you know, maybe limited tomorrow, possibly, hopefully Saturday. Appreciate it, Bruce. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, next question to Todd Lebo. Morning, Coach. How are you doing today? All right. Fine. Thank you. You guys are almost through this season. It's certainly been trying from just trying to get, get on the basketball court and to, you know, not winning as many games as you'd like. What have you seen from your guys away from the court as far as, like, have they, have they come together? Has it been, like, just is there some sort of descriptive words you can use to, to kind of explain what this has been like? to try to get to where you are right now, just getting games played? Um, I, I don't know. And I talked to coaches, uh, talked to Tom Izzo yesterday. I, I you know, Matt Painter this morning. I, it's just, it's just hard. People have no idea. And it, it's, it's hard on obviously the coaches. Um, I, there was an article last week. I didn't read it, but I just saw the headlines. I'm everything but a coach. And uh, you know, it, it, you, you've had to do so many different things. Our trainers, our, who are our healthcare workers, our frontline guys, they've, they've been ex extraordinary, extraordinary um, with the, you know, not only their time, but their knowledge and working with the doctors and, and giving us a chance. But for the kids, it's hard. I, we got back Saturday night and now you got to tell them, hey, you got to get up and, and test in the morning again on Sunday on your day off. And, and um, it, it's just, you, know, you see stuff on the news, the mental health, of young people, um, and and again, oh, you know, we're just trying to keep be positive with our guys. Uh, not only the season, you know, Kellis just brought up no fans in the stands, the experiences, um, the travel. You know, it's it's different. Uh, we can't do things that we normally do, and but I keep encouraging them that they've stuck with it. I keep encouraging them that you know that uh, it, you become tougher, you become. Uh, better in, in the long, uh, your long haul of your life, going through challenges like this. Um, and I keep, uh, you know, applauding them that they haven't, they haven't quit. They keep battling. Um, they, for the most part, I didn't think last week the practices were great, but yesterday was really good again. Uh, so, you know, give them some credit because it has not been easy for them. Um whether you win or lose, it's, you know, teams around the country, coaches around the country, it has been a difficult, difficult challenge for everybody. So in the Big 12 this year, I mean, you guys are only one game short of right now being able to finish. Do you, you think you're going to get that extra game in that off week? And what should they do at the top there? Baylor's so many games behind as far as number of games played. You guys have played through without having a couple of guys. It, it has, has everyone like maybe made that sacrifice and played some games that, that they didn't want to have to go play shorthanded? Well, you always kind of wonder, uh, but, you know, I, I, I have, because obviously uh, Elvin Brooks was on our staff. I, I think Baylor really got hit hard this last time. And uh, uh, they, it's not just, you know, one or two guys that got it this time. I think they have a, a majority of their team. So we hope they can recover. Obviously, you know, Scott, it's a special year for him and a, and a great group. And um, I know we voted, you know, for league standings that it's going to go on percentages because uh, we anticipated early um, everyone wouldn't have equal number of games. Uh, they're going to do their best to get as many games in as possible. Um, I've been told if everything goes right, we'll play that Iowa State game uh, that last week. Obviously, a lot of things can still happen between now and then. Um, and they're just going to make up as many games as possible. Um, and then just, we all knew this was not going to be perfect. And you, you know, you try to do what's best for the league, for our, for our school, for our athletic department. And, uh, you know, just have to deal with, with the tough times. I, I saw Nebraska's playing, they played Friday night, Sunday. I think they're playing Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Wednesday at Maryland to make up games. And then they got to come back and get another one. So um, it's just it's just not been normal, and everyone's doing their their best to get through it.
Uh, next question of Michael Goins. Yeah, Bruce, how would you evaluate uh, Davion Bradford's advancement and how have you con continued to encourage him to, to make progress? Well, I think that, you know, again, I've said over and over, uh, he's been my most pleasant surprise. Um, you know, again, for him to average 30 minutes, I, I, I'll go, going into it, I thought maybe he would have 18 or 20 at the most. Uh, you know, so he, his, his endurance has been much better. Uh, he's he's a, a special young man. He uh, just a good, happy kid. He, you know, we get after him and he smiles. He, he wants to be coached. He wants to do better. He appreciates it. He, he apologizes. He says, thank you. Uh, you know, you just can't ask for more. Uh, you know, you saw a, a move on Saturday that I had not seen. You know, he got the ball at the free throw line and did a, a Euro step and, and then didn't fall out and scored. So, um, you know, he's, he's done better and better. He, uh, you know, with it, uh, he needs his next step will be in the off season, getting in the weight room, which, you know, was limited in the, you know, in the summer, in the fall. Uh, he's really got to get his legs stronger. Um, you know, if he can do that, he can take another uh, big step uh, going into next year. But, uh, you know, defensively, footwork is going to be a big, big thing. And I think some of that comes with strength. Some of it comes with knowledge. Uh, and then some of it just working on footwork, which, uh, you know, he, now, you know, I, I've told a lot of the guys just talking to them. Now, you know what this is about. Now, you now, you know what you got to work on. Now, are you going to do it? And, and are you going to do it, uh, you know, beyond, beyond and, and to make the steps you need to make? Because it just doesn't happen overnight. But again, I can't say enough about him. Uh, he's been a blast to coach. And, and he's done really, really well for us. And how has Casey Eziagu progressed since he returned a couple weeks ago? Well, I, and, and it was, and I said it to you guys, and I, I told him, I told his dad, when, you know, when he decided to have the surgery, I said, you got to understand, this is not going to be easy. And, and I've done it before with guys. Um, you sit out seven weeks, you don't practice. Um, now you get in the middle of, you're coming back in the middle of the season. So you don't have those reps that you need to get back. Um, I thought Saturday he made a real post move, the up and under that uh, he hasn't done in a long time. Uh, so, you know, slowly but surely, he's, he's gotten a little better uh, with just kind of getting that rhythm and feel. I thought our big guys, they were nine for, I think nine for 14. He's Casey's four for five and baby on five for nine. Uh, so they, you know, for those guys, if, you know, we can get that kind of production, uh, Wednesday night, obviously that would be really, really helpful for us. And he seems to be a loose fun loving guy. Is, is he, uh, kind of one of the guys that keeps people loose on the team? Yeah. Uh, well, Davion's probably the happiest go lucky guy. I think one of the better ones, uh, Rudy, uh, but Casey's got a good spirit about him. Um, uh, you know, he's a little older, a little more mature, obviously. Uh, you know, he's been to prep school, Canada, been all over the place, uh, UTEP, uh, you know, so he's, he's got a good spirit about him, a good sense of what, uh, you know, reality is and what life's about. And so, uh, you know, he, and, and I think that's, you know, his maturity, that's the problem he wanted. We could have used his maturity, but now when you're trying to get your game back and get your conditioning back, it's hard to, to be a leader, hard to be a guy that is a spirited guy because you're struggling yourself. So hopefully he, as he moves forward here, this last stretch, um, he can get a little more confidence, feel good about himself and then help other people around him because that that's the kind of person he is. Thank you, Bruce. Okay, uh, we'll do uh, one last question to Kellis Robinette. Uh, that question you were asking earlier made me uh, think, is there a minimum number of games you think a team should have to play to, to claim a Big 12 championship, even in a year like this? I don't know if, I'll be honest, I didn't pay close enough attention if they did that. Um, I know, obviously, the NCAA put in a minimum number of games to get in the tournament. Uh, again, anticipating ahead of time, uh, you know, what was, 
you know, what was going to maybe happen. Um, you know, and, and teams all over the country have dealt with different situations. Um, you know, I, I, you know, if they can get to, you know, 14, 15 games in the league, I, you know, they, they should be able to win the championship and I'm sure there'll be some kind of asterisk there, but if they, you know, if they have that opportunity and still win it, uh, you know, that's what we all voted on early and that's what you got to kind of stick with. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if they go undefeated, then it's not much of a debate. It's not a question. Yes. And <laughs> that'll be, it'll be interesting how they come back. Uh, you know, again, their experience, their, their toughness, uh, their feel, you know, should help them, but uh, you know, it, it may take, a, it may, even them, it may take them a little bit of time to get some rhythm back and uh, you hope they feel good as they, they get into the tournament so they can have a nice run. 